Okay, everybody, question two. Now, this is a composite uh, structural problem. So what you want to do here is convert one of your materials into the same Young's modulus. Uh, now, typically, you're going to pick on the material with the lower Young's modulus. In this case, it's going to be the concrete. And we're going to redesign our structure so that the steel is replaced by concrete, uh, but we're going to have overall the same um, stress inside the concrete. Now, Young's modulus stress, obviously there's a relationship there. Young's modulus stress is, um, um, uh, is stress over strain. So how do we achieve that? Well, we therefore, if we, if we want to have the same amount of stress, that means I'm in effect going to have to increase my area for the piece of um, section where we've got the high Young's modulus and that's how, that's how you normally go around and tackle this problem. So if you're, I, I draw the cross section where I've got a concrete section here, that's uh, that would be that section there and then we've got uh, on the outer side we've got the still Young's modulus and that will have um, these these two sections here will have the same Young's modulus on the steel. So looking from above, we're going to have the concrete A1, which is going to be given by pi for a pi over four d squared, and then the outer steel section will be pi over four, and then we've got a do a kind of d squared outer divided by, sorry, not divided, take away d squared inner. So that will, that's what we're going to be doing in terms of area and uh, Young's modulus. So this is our actual case, and we're going to make a fictitious case where we're going to replace the steel and imagine that we're loading this thing up, which is with 80 killer newtons. And this is all just going to be concrete that's, uh, that's getting squashed. And we want to have the same stress inside here as the same stress inside there. Right, so the relationship is simply scaling in terms of the Young's modulus. So area scales with, air, um, with the Young's modulus. And you could do something. What, Normally we use something called the N factor. So N is the Young's modulus of the steel divided by the Young's modulus of the concrete. And you try to have an N factor, you don't have to, but try to have an N factor that's a, a value larger than one. That's why we typically pick on the material which has the lower um, uh, Young's modulus to be the material that we kind of rescale everything by. So we've got 200 divided by 24, and that gives me a factor of 8.33. No units is dimensionless. I worked out these numbers here, and I found that A1 was 1 1.7, uh, 1.1781 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared and A2 was um, no sorry that's uh, that's A2 smaller area and that the A1 was 3.84 Okay, uh, so this area here um, is in effect going to be, we'll call this A star, A star 1, and that's going to be the area of the concrete 
plus the area of the steel scaled by this n factor. So we want to take these numbers, take this, and put them into here. And you end up with 13.6659 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. So you see that this number here, if you combine these two numbers, you've got about, what, 5? Um, and compared with this, well, you've got something, I guess, knocking on to be, what, um, a section which would be about five times, three times maybe the equivalent. <clears throat> so now let's work out what the stress is inside this imaginary setup when you put an 80 kilonewton on top and you simply find stress that's inside the concrete by the force divided by the area. The area that we're going to use is for our imaginary setup, which is this 13.66 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. And I work that out and I got uh, 5.854 megapascals okay so we are actually being asked to find reactions i forces so we don't want to stop there we want to convert our uh, stress our stress into a force so we need to go back to our first diagram and say to yourself okay well i've got this stress which is uh, my sigma one so what is the force that's going to be inside that section? Well, in this case, that will be the force inside the concrete will be the stress inside the concrete times by the actual real cross-sectional area of that concrete. So that's A1. So put that those values together and you get 22.53 kilonewtons so that's that done now for the steel well the steel still needs um, a bit of scaling so we we're we're sort of taking out this this middle section here so we now got these outer sections where we've got all this stress and we now want to concentrate this down back into as if it was just this these sort of sections here so, so we've got this stress being all squashed there. So what is uh, the force going to be for the steel? Well, it's going to have something to do with the concentration, uh, the stress in the concrete in our fictitious section. Now you're bringing the sections closer together. So you are expecting the stress to shoot up. And that will be shooting up by the n factor. So that's how much you then need to squash things in. And then you multiply that by the actual area of the outer rim of the of the steel. And that's will be A2. So you put all those numbers together and you get 57.47 kilonewtons. So that one compares with the first answer. So I'm reasonably confident with my solution.